Oh, right, all right, all right. Let's go, guys. It's the semi-finals of the World Championship. I am Katowice. We've got Hero representing Dragon Phoenix Gaming in the bottom left side. The greatest Protoss, the man that came out of the military. And it seems like, if anything, he was better the day he stepped out of the military than the day he stepped into the military, which is very rare. His opponent, though, is the man, the monster, that has defied all expectations to reversal Rainer in the previous round. He has made it here now to the semi-finals, despite barely getting out of the group stage with a two win, three loss score. Uh, he managed to destroy Hero Marine in an unexpectedly one-sided series and uh, obviously reversaling versus Rainer. So the hype is there. Everyone's been counting him out of his series saying he has no chance up to now, but Oliveira representing Kaizy Gaming has shown that he is able to play with the big dogs and uh, him beating Rainer, I mean, any Terran beating Rainer is one of the just most impossible things to pull off. It is so hard. And when you get that draw, you always shake your head and go, well, that's a bummer. You know, Serral, Serral is also one on a good day where I think him and Rainer both are like just this disgusting obstacle for a Terran player to get through. You can always make it close as a top Terran player, but actually finishing those guys off and putting them in the ground is a, a mythical dream that many of them course really want to have happen but uh very rarely get to convert on that in a big tournament especially in these best of fives but this is tvp different matchup and a matchup where a lot of players were worried that protoss would be a bit nerfed in this patch um because the maps the bases are quite spread out which means it's hard to defend your bases from terran multiprong on the other hand maps like altitude here massive rush distance and it should really favor the protoss player in this map hero is going to go for a twilight council here notice how he's got walling off the reaper ledge but he's also got a pile on there he could build a battery on the low ground there with it or he could wall off the high ground in an emergency if he was being like proxy raxed or something like that marines were kind of running in so i do like the defensive setup here for hero he's going to be able to block that uh reaper just fine and adept's going to shade on in on the front but command center's finished bunkers up there's a marine inside and second barracks opening here into okay so he's got factory second barracks and a second gas geyser you all know that I love this opening. Um, coffee has inspired a lot of players to improve their TVP in the Chinese scene. Ooh, oh, I thought that was gonna get in the bunker. You notice how the SCV decelerated? If he moved it past the bunker and then told the bunker to grab the SCV, is the way you do that. You, you click the load button and click it on the SCV. It actually would have got in in time. So very small mistake for Oliveira, but one SCV is not, nothing to you know be too upset about. Cyclone's on the way, building a depot there, and Stim does start. Now, the question is, with these coffee builds, he would often also get a third barracks here uh, and get really, really wild and delay those gases on the natural a long time. And I think that's what makes the Chinese TVP some of the scariest. And I know I'm talking about coffee, and you're like, what the hell? Coffee's nowhere near as good as time. But he really is a big inspiration for a lot of the Chinese players because he may not be as, as good mechanically as Oliveira as time, but uh, he's definitely one of the trendsetters in the matchup. And he actually surprised everybody by winning... Uh, in the um, in the playing stage against a very good Protoss player whose name is now eluding me. I, I can't remember. He beat someone really good in the first round. Zaun. I think he beat Zaun 2-0, and everyone was shocked um, in, in the upper bracket of that. Anyways, uh, we've got the third barracks now on the way pre-starport. Yeah, so Engineering Bay, third barracks. Notice there's still no gases and no starport, but this allows you to get so many bio units up. The weakness of this style is, of course, you don't have a siege tank. And um, for those who don't know, by the way, I didn't realize, but I watched Rainer streaming the other day. This game was obviously played about two weeks ago now from when I'm casting it, maybe up to three weeks from when you're seeing it on YouTube. But Rainer actually has been learning Terran and studying these replays. And uh, Rainer has been, for the first time, rather than just kind of randomly making up builds playing Terran, he's actually copied this build for his TVP. He thinks it's really good and really solid. And uh, we'll see if it does indeed play out that way. I do feel it's incredibly weak to four gate blink. Like if there was a big four gate blink attack coming in, which there could be, but the prism isn't here. Oh, I think you die to four gate blink because your Marines don't have stim yet. I guess it kicks in now. But if there was like 10, normally eight or nine stalkers can blink in at five minutes. If they did that, I think they could out micro this army with a prism. Hero's taken a long time to get across the map though. And I've got to question Hero's entire style here. I think he was really expecting a big attack to come out of Oliveira. It hasn't happened. And so now Hero is just kind of sitting there massing Stalkers on two base. He is going to move towards the third. And he's going to, of course, lift up and start looking for that harassment. Observer Siege is up in the base. Prism on the right side, Stalkers on the left. 
He does have that pylon over there as well. He's going to go Colossus and upgrades behind it. The spread of units. Is Oliveira expecting a disruptor drop? Oh, Stalkers run in. Grab one, two, three SCVs. Make it four. Very nicely done. Does even get a volley off on the Cyclone. The Prism does not go in just yet. And a turret is building for Oliveira. Four SCVs, not bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. Hero might be two base for a long time, but he's actually so good with his Stalkers. That being said, big bio army building up right now. Massive bio army building up. These stalkers going to go by for Hero. Hero goes straight into the main base. He's going to start picking off these stalkers. He was a little slow to get this started. But, oh, I like the way he's buying time here. There's no concussive shells, so he should only lose maybe one or two stalkers. Ah, oh, he does lose the second one. No stalkers do blink away. Back in the main. Warps in a few zealots. 13 SCVs have gone down. Oh, no. Oliveira's attack got so delayed. And he loses all of these workers behind it as well. The Stalkers will pick up and rotate. And he's just got to focus on defending at home. A Sentry does warp in. He'll need to warp in more than that Sentry, though. That's a lot of bio coming forwards. Hero, of course, not stopping at all on the aggression. Trying to slow Oliveira down. Oliveira's shoving in right now. The Observer does see it, as do the Stalkers. The Cyclone goes down. The battery is very exposed at the front. He's only got one Sentry. He's warped in a few Zealots, but these are slow Zealots. And the Colossus is not here. A botched Force Field. That should have been right there. A very awkward Force field for Hero, but Oliveira shoving in desperately. He needs to do damage. He's taken massive damage on the back foot behind this. Those probes should have evacuated. The Colossus is going to go down there, but oh, he's trying to click on the Marines. He tried to click on the Marines with the Colossus, but there was two Marauders in front of him, and a Colossus cannot tank those Marauder shots. Oliveira is going to get the Artosis pylon, and what the hell? This game was absolutely bizarre. All right, nice sudden victory there in game number one. Going into game number two, Oliveira, repping Kaiser Gaming in the top left, and his opponent going for an immediate probe scout slash harass hero in the bottom right side. So I did a quick build order review at the end of that last game, guys, and I went and checked out the old build order for the four gate blink, which I never practiced. I never actually studied and memorized the exact details, but the old parting four gate blink build, I do think would kill Oliveira's build. However, with that build, you delay blink till after you start your robo. So it delays blink about 20, 30 seconds, but you get the robo down earlier, which is really cool. Um, that allows you to get the earlier prism out and you go prism immediately. Whereas in that game, Hero was playing way safer. He went fast blink so that he could, you know, blink and shut down a medevac or raven harassing him. He went observer for vision first as well. So Hero played actually a little bit careful in that game. Whereas if he just blindly committed to a straight up super crisp aggressive four gate, he could have hit it about five minutes. Uh, either you can hit about five ten, I would say on that big map maybe five fifteen with eight stalkers, or uh, sometimes as early as five oh five, depending on how you do it. If you blink in the moment your prism gets there, or you can hit about five twenty five. Um, 5.30 with about 11, 12 Stalkers. And either of those, I do think, would have been able to just do so much damage to Hero because the Cyclone doesn't really do much. You can always just pick up any unit it locks onto. You can pick away the Marines with Stim. They don't have shields or medevacs. There's no Marauders. They're very fragile. And uh, the Stim doesn't kick in until, I think, about five minutes. Uh, was it 5.20? So even if they do Stim, they can't heal up after each of those Stims, and it's, uh, it's not a critical mass of Marines. So... I think there's a narrow window where Oliveira's build in that last game was vulnerable. But uh, so far, nice harassment by Hero. Notice he delayed that command center to about a minute 50. That's really well done. And spots the Marine coming out. Oliveira's gone Marine into Reactor. This guy's going to now build the second depot. And we'll see what Oliveira's plan is in game number two. Meanwhile, Hero has gone for the Cybercore. He's going to have a Nexus on the way. And interestingly, Chronoing Probes instead of the Adept. That is very different. Also, skipping Warp Gate. He's going to build a target. So this tells us Hero is not planning to pressure at all with the Adepts. And since the reactor is down on time, that's a good call. Because Oliveira will easily have three Marines out, then five Marines and the rest. Uh, on the other hand, if this was no reactor, if Oliveira had chosen to go factory, then build the reactor and have a pause in the Marine production, which is another common build order, then the Adept pressure has a much higher chance of actually doing damage. But Hero is like, yeah, I'm just going to stay home and defend. Don't need to bother. Go for a Stargate, probably get an Oracle into Phoenix play out. And this is indeed, guys, factory into second barracks. And this time the second gas goes down after the second barracks. Okay, that's interesting. I feel like I've seen him do it both ways. I prefer factory second gas than the barracks, but this way you can afford the third barracks earlier. Interesting. And I do think it's very efficient as and solid as an opening. You just get so many units out and the Protoss always has to be afraid of the sheer number of units. If we have to think about this style in terms of what is its weakest uh, uh, area of what Oliveira is doing, the weakness is that it cannot harass. 
there's no starport. So the Raven, auto turret harass, the Widow Mine drop, all that stuff that Protoss is normally paranoid about, you can't threaten with. So there's a bit of a mind game going on where, like in game one, Oliveira is hoping that Hero plays a bit paranoid. Now this time around, Hero is not so much playing paranoid as he is playing aggressive. He's gone for an Oracle and he's going straight into a Twilight and three gates with a proxy gate. So Hero is basically saying, harass with an Oracle and let's kill you with Blink Stalkers and four gate Blink even. Perfect build order. This is actually going to work really well because the Oracle works like the Warp Prism to spot the high ground. As long as you don't lose the Oracle, you can always Blink up. And remember what we talked about, with no Siege tanks, you're very vulnerable. On the other hand, he's building tanks this time. He is actually going straight into Siege tank production. This looks a little bit more like my 7 minute 30 push build order. Oh, but the Oracle, the Oracle. Oh, it barely gets out. Only gets one Marine. Still very good defense for Oliveira. And if he builds a second tank, he's really well set up for this. Because then he can put a tank and a bunker at the front and a tank up here. If he doesn't invest in the bunker though... He could be in big doo-doo. Likewise, if that starport, if that factory swaps off, if he doesn't build another tank when he hits 125 gas, he could be killed by this. Hero is very committed right now. Let's see what happens. The Adept going to shade on in. Oracle still hiding in the back. Siege tank does start up. If Oliveira builds a bunker, I would say that he is almost completely unbreakable. But if he skips the bunker, there's always a chance those stalkers come in and bust the tanks. And... Because Oliveira is building such a big army of marines and siege tanks, you feel like you've got so much army, you don't need the bunker. Sometimes, this sort of build from Oliveira lulls you into a false sense of security. As, as the Terran, you're thinking, oh, he can't break me. I'm the one who's going to break him. Ooh, accidental adept shade in. That's a bummer. Does get one SCV. At least he gets something. Oracle's still over there. He's going to come on in, is he? And turns on the laser beam. Cyclone got f 2 to the front. Big mistake by Oliveira. And does take out three SCVs. Meanwhile, Stalker's on the front, but oh, Oliveira is doing a quick push into a four gate blink. This is really bad for Oliveira. I think Oliveira was unbreakable on the defense pretty much, or at least in a very safe position, even without the bunker. But now that the Stalkers are going to come in, they're going to grab a medevac and oh, blink is done, but done a little bit late. He's going to get a few of these Marines. I still think this is very good for Hero though. You don't want to push right now with no shields and only one medevac. This is a real small army. But maybe Oliveira can make something of it if he can get a good siege position. There is a battery there. The Stalkers on the reverse side are going to come in for the flank. I like that move for Hero. He backstabs, cuts off the reinforcement of Marines, and then gets ready to flank. If these units can come in from behind, they could take these tanks out. There's actually not much high ground vision. It's only whatever the medevac provides. But Hero does lose a Stalker there. Another Marine comes in from behind this. The siege tanks aren't quite in range. And those Stalkers pick off another Marine. And look at that. Great choice to retreat here for Oliveira. Oh, the Stalkers try to chase it. The rest of the Stalkers are coming forward. They need to blink on this. But look at that. He's going to siege up in the hedge. Nice moves by Oliveira. Let's see how many of these Stalkers he can take out, though. Hero is so decisive. Only loses one or two Stalkers in total. Three Stalkers for 24 Marines. Two tanks to Cyclone to Medivac, guys. Terran players are absolutely crying looking at that unit's lost tab. That is the power of going heavy Blink Stalker against a Terran that pushes out with an early surprise maneuver like that. Oh, Oliveira was hoping to catch off. The hero going for Colossus, going for some higher tech. Catch him before the tech kicked in. Little did he know he was playing right to Hero's hands. And we have two very quick games. Oliveira crushes, Hero crushes game two. It's an action-packed series. Let's go to game three. All right. Well, he's back in the scoreboard there. The Oracle didn't do that well, but it's interesting because at this point, he's playing against the guy who's obsessed with these multiple barracks factory builds. Is he going to do it again? Oliveira in the bottom left side going for the barracks into the gas. The gas is actually a second later than it should be. Interesting. And that is a very suspicious probe. Looks like we're going to have Proxy Gate. Now, Oliveira, if he skips the bunker, is very vulnerable to Proxy Gate builds. Any low ground command center build in general is quite vulnerable. He hasn't taken the second gas. So that is usually what you want, right? A player who's going to build the command center on the low ground. Um, if Oliveira goes for an 18 SCV scout, which is this SCV rallying across, that's bad for Hero. But if he plays blind, it's probably pretty good for Hero. And there we go, he's playing blind. Hasn't sent it across. Ooh, this is really good for Hero. <clears throat> Hero's got a gateway finishing at home. Cybercore goes down there on 20 supply. Second gate already on the way on the front. And he should be starting a Zealot to rally across the map right now. There we go, Zealot starts up. You guys know this build, you love it. There's a Reaper on the way as well, which takes a long time to build, which delays the reactor. And the probe there, gonna force that command center to be off center. And that SCV will be getting slowed down. Oh, probe does 
derp out as that SCV shuffles over, but a nice hot swap for Oliveira and the probe. Does he hang around here? Is he going to recall that probe? I don't think so. I think you need Chrono Boost. So he's just going to let the probe die. The Reaper will come out. Interesting. SCV sees the Nexus. He knows it's a late Nexus. Oliveira, does he cancel the command center? He kills the probe. He should know this is a proxy gate. That's such a late Nexus over there. And he sees it. And he cancels, right? Surely you don't... Oh, is he going to pull the boys? He's going to pull the boys, but that bunker is a little slow to go down. I don't know if he can get that bunker up. We've already got two adepts on the way. Where's the zealot? He cancelled the zealot? Why did he cancel the zealot? He cancelled the zealot, guys. Really weird choice here. Now, Oliveira did go for a very late SCV scout, and that is helping him out here. This would have been a lot worse. If he didn't go for that SCV scout, he'd be in big trouble. So it's even later than 18 supply. It seems the meta has shifted. Adept does get some hits off, but the SCV is not actually dying just yet. The bunker's going to get up. And this has not really found the damage at all. I've got to question where that Zealot is. If there's a Zealot in there joining up with that, that's a very different story. I think maybe Hero messed up on some of his execution. Letting this get up is a really, really not great for Hero. I mean, he can play it out because it's Hero, and I'm sure he'll find more damage because he always does. But got to really be a little bit careful in terms of how that goes. Now, that Adept's going to walk past the bunker. Let's take a lot of damage. Second Barracks is on the way. Oliveira loves this second Barracks factory opening. I do as well. It feels like it's very safe, very consistent. And I do think Oliveira was doing a lot of very consistent, solid openings this tournament. I don't think he's been focusing on cheesy things or big aggressive things. He gets an Adept kill there just with good micro. Command Center moves over. And that Reaper is still trying to dance. That was unnecessary. But Cyclone's coming out now. And that depot does get repaired by the SCVs. The Adepts are going to shade up that ramp and look for an SCV kill, but a good hot pullback. And that Cyclone is going to start taking care of you. you got to get out of here or you know that there's going to be a Cyclone any moment now. And that is going to be a dead Adept. A fourth Adept there as well runs in. It does get out. But two Adepts have gone down for denied mining time. And what else? Picking off maybe an SCV. One Reaper. But you're going to have that gateway there. If that gateway goes down, you are screwed. So Hero is kind of forced to keep warping in units to maintain pressure. His warp gate is finished. He warps in these two stalkers at home. Robo's on the way after that. But he does have his natural mostly saturated. And it looks like he wants to go for a quick third. So I think we're going to see mass blink charge play from Hero in this game. Uh, simply because if you're going for such a quick third base, you don't really have time to get splash damage up behind this. Yeah, I think two gas style by the looks of it. So yeah, get a handful of blink stalkers out for map control and then go into heavy charge zealot play seems to be the way that he's going. We've got that second barracks building, the engineering bay on the way in case there is a DT follow-up. Tank is on the high ground. He's going to try and move that down to help join up with the bunker. And you can see these adepts still getting kept out. Third barracks building on the tech lab immediately. Thing is, it's such a passive setup. And I really think Hero needs to just go Colossus against this style. I, I think. I normally am not a big... Oh, it could go straight Storm as well. Either of those works. But I, I think because Oliveira is just massing up and he's really gearing up for an eight minute timing, seven and a half minutes maybe. Like he could do the scary push out earlier, usually, like we saw that attempt in that last game. Two tanks, a pack of Marines without upgrades. But that is of course the uh, exception to the rule. More often than not, they're gonna be pushing a little bit later. And so I think the way to deal with that is to get your splash damage up a little bit quicker because there's no harassment. There is very little scouting. Oliveira is mostly blind in this. So you can get away with extreme greed. Look, he's got to drop a scan just to see what's happening. That is a fourth gateway technically, but keep in mind, that gateway will get cleaned up at some point. Two more gateways go down on the natural. Creates a little bit of tankiness in front of the Nexus and obstructs units from running into the base. I do think SimCity and TVP, one of the most underrated things. A lot of Protoss players just don't really SimCity. But I think having gateways up front does slow down those Terran advances when they catch you out of position. Five more gateways on the way. It is indeed that mass charge style, but no upgrades for it, whereas plus one is on the way for Oliveira. So... Zealot Stalker on mass, no forge upgrades. I think to make this style work, you do need forward proxy gate. So I'd, I'd like to see a, a gateway down the bottom. But hey, he's got a warp prism, so that might be good enough. If he can blink up here into the main base, that'd be great. The observer does go down. Looks like it got sniped by Oliveira's army. He's going to stim this marine out, desperately trying to get some scouting info. And you can see that Hero is going for 11 stalkers. That's so many stalkers, dude. The Adepts are still trying to get some threat of harassment on the natural. I think he might even finish that shade. Nope, sees the armies right there. Does cancel it. Oh, is Hero base trading? 
Okay, so I think here, yeah, with this style, fighting the bio front on is not the best. He might be hoping that when Oliveira moves out, he can just like dive in the natural. That's why Hero is hiding all of his units. Oh, there is a tank on the high ground though. That's unfortunate. He could bring the tank friendly fire into the SCV line though. That could work in his favor, but only getting a few of these SCVs. It's not the worst trade. The Adepts aren't a great unit as the game goes on. It is what it is. Two more Stalkers warping in. Hero is going for Immortals and Zealots here as well. He's still only on a two gas, three base style. So he really wants Oliveira to push out, but Oliveira is being patient. He builds a third command center. Hero is like, dude, dude, come on. You know I'm on three bases. I could be taking a fourth. You don't know what's happening. Come on, show some urgency. Oliveira is doing the opposite of that. Oliveira cleans up the prison with a cyclone and he's just being so patient. And if Hero is not adding splash damage, if he's not taking a fourth base or upgrades, then he's gonna fall further behind. The longer the fight is delayed, the better it is for Terran. Oliveira scans the army on the front. He's so aware of what Hero is trying to do and he is countering it so well. He adds a fourth and fifth barracks. He's got his plus one armor on the way. He's up to three siege tanks with a fourth and a liberator on the way. Oliveira is just not jumping the gun and it's Hero who wants action. He wants back and forth. He wants the Terran to be desperately trying to inflict damage on him. And Oliveira is not. Oliveira refuses to play into Hero's hand. He does pick off a Stalker. The Marauder almost gets picked off, but not quite. Great micro by Oliveira. Big army coming in on the front. Zealots are going to come down. Extra gases going down. A Forge and a Templar Archives, but that's far too late to be ready. Hero is going to have to go for a mass Zealot surround. He's built another 10 probes, two gases and a bunch of tech, but he's done it at the worst time because now the push is on his front doorstep and he's not ready for it. He's got a mass zealot. He's gonna have to set up a six around. There's only one sentry for Guardian Shield. Where is the immortal zealot? It's coming in from the north. He does have zealots set up for a flank from the bottom left, but these zealots actually are not able to get on top of the tanks too easily. The immortal does get in range of that tank on the north side. The stalkers will blink forward, but the tanks punishing these stalkers for that move and not the best possible surround for here. It was an okay fight. He does get rid of all the tanks, which is pretty good. I think it's definitely playable from here. Psy Storm's on the way as well. Oliveira wisely pulls back to let his units heal. Hero with a good blink backwards, but my god. Whoa, he's pulling the boys! He's pulling the boys, Oliveira! Even though he's got a third base finishing, he's not that far behind economically. He could play a longer game, but instead he's saying, you know what, I sense weakness right now. Remember, he scanned the Templar archives on the front line. He knows that Psy Storm's not ready because he saw that finish with his scan. And here we go, he's gonna pull the boys in. There's no splash damage right now. There's only one Archon and a couple of Immortals. The Zealots on the backside will clean up the rally of Siege Tank Marauder. I think Hero has to give this base up though. And oh man, if he got Psy Storm, he might be able to come back and defend this on two base, but instead it gets depowered. Just 18 seconds from finishing. Zealots are in the base. Oliveira taking big damage, but he will stabilize and hold on to his production. Oh no, Gateways at the front is really good for slowing the advance. But if you've only got one pylon powering them, then that SimCity will backfire. Heroes, probes trying to fight this, and he's going to attack in, but the Liberate is slaying his Immortal Archon. The force field's not terrible, but these stalkers just cannot get anything done on the north side of this. And you can see that Oliveira here just playing such a patient style, doing the same build time and again, over and over again. But Hero, who wanted action, he wanted micro, he wanted back and forth, and Oliveira just doesn't actually engage in that dance. Oliveira says, F fighting for map control. I'm just gonna turtle for the first eight minutes of this game, and then I'm gonna come and kill you. And Hero, over committing to army units, not enough to his upgrades, his tech, his splash damage. And you can see, of course, he's got plus one finish now, but the 1-1 one, one bio with six metavax is just overwhelming versus those stalkers in a pitch battle. The last Artosis pylon goes down. And even though the bio is deep in the red, Oliveira with a very well-timed SCV pull. And once again, that same sort of build order here does very well for- All right, very nice hold there by Oliveira in that last game. Just continuing to build Marines, pulling the SCVs to the low ground and uh, getting that bunker up down there at the start, setting himself up for success. Now in the top left of Gresvin against another very early probe coming across, but I think directly to harass this time hero in the bottom right side. Interesting pylon positioning. Looks like he's gonna be building his- uh, Wait, is he proxying again? I think he's proxying again, actually. Is he gonna build a gateway in real close? That pylon positioning back there is really weird, but no, looks like he's just going into harass. And he'd like to block the barracks going down. And he gets there, very nicely done. But Oliveira reacts quickly, pulls another SCV, so his barracks is not delayed by long, even though it is back from the wall now. 
recessed a little bit. That's part of the advantage of sending a probe across at the very start of the game. Nicely done. Now, uh, I would criticize Hero Guys. They did a bit of a post game analysis uh, after that last one. Looking at the replay, I think he should have built a Stalker out of the proxy. It could have microed by outranging all those units and picked off a lot more. And I do think he should have let the Zealot uh, come across the map. Even though it takes a long time to walk across this turn, it's a big map. I think it would have been worth it. Hero here keeping up some aggression with the probe. Very nicely done. I mean, Oliver has only shown one size so far at this point. Does Hero just try to blind counter it with like four gate blink aggression or going straight to splash damage on three base? I think going straight like Colossus into third is very viable. Olivera has no harassment. You could open two gate blink into a third base, add Colossus and be good. But I mean, this is why I don't think Olivera does the same thing again. I would imagine he plays Raven this game. Because as a Terran, you don't want to just be so predictable that you're doing the same thing over and over. I would imagine Oliveira is going to be changing that up. Now, look at that. Gets the command center down. Very nicely done. Hero's like, damn it. I'm to block that. Reaper's going to pop in a few seconds. And the probe doesn't want to die to that. So he actually backs off on his own. Second pylon on the natural down here for Hero. That's close enough you can build a battery to heal and defend. But it also blocks the Reaper ledge. As Reapers can jump up here to get in your natural. Meanwhile, Oliveira sees the Nexus timing, and oh, the probe got caught. So Hero actually tried to be sneaky with the probe and kind of walked straight into that Reaper, unfortunate for him. Factory goes down behind this, and a Marine, usually into Reactor here for Oliveira, I would imagine. His Reaper is just checking for proxies as he saw the probe up in a bit of a weird position. Reactor goes down and an immediate bunker, so nice safe play there. Hero's actually got a shield battery and going Stargate. All right. I wonder if we see like Phoenix Zealot or something like that. I've been really calling for more Phoenix Zealot play. I think it's so much fun and can be very effective. But uh, of course, Oliveira has been playing that second barracks factory build every game. This time he goes second gas into second barracks. I really wonder the variations on it. Sometimes he goes second barracks, then the second gas. Other times it's second gas, then second barracks. I don't know what the exact change is. Obviously, it's pretty slight. It's only a few seconds either way, but I wonder if there's like a conscious reasoning for why he chooses one over the other. Great micro by Oliveira. Adept damaging SCVs, but not killing any. And spotting the tech lab. So, can Hero counter this play somehow? If he goes like blind Phoenix, I don't think that'll be great. I still think Oracle's a good choice. He does go Phoenix. <laughs> As I say it. I mean, it's definitely not Widow Mines. And you don't have to be worried about super quick Raven because he's clearly not swapping a starboard onto that tech lab. I, I really want to see Hero show that 300 IQ and show how to pick this style apart. And uh, maybe just, I guess he's probably just going to play Phoenix Colossus. That's a very popular style, this tournament. And uh, a lot of players playing, I know Hero is capable of it, even though it's a bit turtlier than the styles that he normally prefers. But yeah, double gas on the natural before four minutes. He's definitely going to go Robo, Robo Bay into Colossus play. So that could be pretty slick. Uh, Reaper comes in the main. Phoenix is going to say, hey, buddy. And he lifts that up way too early. That's a huge mistake. But no, the other Phoenix pops out just in time. I was going to say the other Phoenixes were, were too far out on the map or, or they weren't actually even spawned. So he couldn't kill it in time, but works out just fine. Hero will be transferring onto both of those gases as well as getting a second gateway. So nice style for him. Meanwhile, Oliveira going stim, triple marine production, third barracks on the tech lab. And remember, Engineering Bay, and then he'll eventually get the Starport and an extra gas or two, but delays that a lot. Very mineral focused to get plenty of men with guns out on the map to start. All right. I mean, we said Colossus play was the way you generally counteract these sort of styles. The one thing I hate about Phoenix Colossus on this map, and um, in general, Altitude as well. I've seen a lot of Protoss players playing this. If you look at these maps, guys, look at the spread. The third, the fourth there there there's massive spread there's lots of dead space and it's really it's if you're defending a drop here to get back down to this triangle base or back up to this third base it takes a long time so i do feel that phoenix colossus is very totally and if you play this style you've got a beeline over into charge archon you can't stay full phoenix colossus and you 100 percent can't play into uh fleet beacon uh into like range phoenix and carriers i think that style is so totally that it is so fragile you're basically like if everything goes perfectly I, I can win with this style but it never goes perfectly because top tier terrans are very good at out positioning now that of course is talking about a terran who's multi-pronging and that's much later in the game this terran is not set up to multi-prong he is finally building medevacs actually he's not putting any siege tanks he's already going medevacs and reacted factory so oliver is 
shifted away from the frontal push style. Notice how he doesn't have as much bio. He's going to Medivax quicker. And I think that's a reaction to the Phoenix play. He wants to be able to multi-prong. So he's actually adapting his style to the way Hero is playing. Hero does get four SCVs there. Will take a lot of damage on one of those Phoenix. Oh, look at that. He immediately picks up 16 Marines and boosts to the south. A very clever move. A lot of Terrans do this. There is an Adept down here, but it's not actually set up to necessarily spot a drop that goes on the very south side. This double drop could win the game because you're so relying on your Phoenix kind of seeing anything coming your way that you will not be uh, able to stop it unless you spot it ahead of time. And that's why we've got Probe. We've got an Adept. Often players put a lot of spotting pylons out there as well. Grabs three more SCVs. It's only four Phoenix, which tells us he should be going charge. Otherwise, you'd be going six or seven Phoenix here usually. But the Twilight only just starting at six and a half minutes. So very turtly style for Hero. He's got an economy advantage though. Adept is going to see this army coming through the middle. Oh, Medivac's in the bottom. Okay, he sees him. The Phoenix are going to recall to the main. If he can get a Colossus up there, he'll be okay. But the Colossus is at the front. He's worried about that army there. He needs a Colossus in the main. Those Phoenix cannot fight this on his own. He's going to have to fall way back and pull the probes away. He's got to run away. Hero has to back away from this push. He's trying to fight 16 Stim Marines head on. Hero absolutely pooping his pants right now. You cannot fight that without the Colossus here. He's already lost 12 workers. A massive victory there. As this attack also says, hey, we pulled the one of the Colossus out of position. Let's get on down there. The Widow Mine's going to make it very hard to defend this base. If he gets the third Nexus, this is basically lights out for Hero. That was massive damage in the main already. Two shots on the Colossus. If he loses that, he's in big doo-doo. The Colossus does go down, saves a bunch of the units, picks up and gets out, and that is devastating damage. Olivera just needs to pull back and survive the counterattack because Hero right now is so behind. He's only got three gateways. He can't counterattack. Hero drops gateways, which doesn't make sense right now. Obviously, Hero is thinking about killing him with a counter roll in, but that assumes Hero can catch these units. Instead, he almost loses the Phoenix. And he might actually get flanked by Stim Bio. This is not that much Protoss. Pro Hero's trying to counter push by rallying a Colossus and two extra gateways in. But he does not have the resources to do that. Oh, the Prism's too far back. Oh, he saves it just barely. Hero so clutch there with that micro. And the Phoenix does go down. Here we go. He's going to do... Oh, he loses a Stalker there, I think. Oh, the Immortal actually gets hit. Interesting. I thought he'd just kill the Stalker. Anyways, behind this, no third base. His main base is back to mining uh, on the minerals. He's got one Colossus only. Widowmine does kill a Stalker. Then these Widowmines are getting too much value. Oh my lord, the only way he can counter it is running a Stalker in and then picking it up with the Prism. There we go. He's going to do that one very nicely, but good micro by Oliveira. Oliveira's only got one Viking out and one Siege Tank almost out. He needs those ranged units to deal with the Colossus. Otherwise, he will get ganked. I think Oliveira also should split his units to the south side. He's very clumped up here. The Colossus needs to target those Marines. If it can blast those Marines, that'll do very well. Nice hot pickups from the Prism. There's just so much bio there. And now with the Vikings as well, Hero does lose the War Prism. The Colossus Colossus is going to get pushed back. Oh god, a second Colossus is here, but he's got so few gateways, remember? No charge or anything this whole time. Colossus rallies in, kills two marines, and then tries to just walk away. One of the most awkward retreats we've seen in a while. Hero did not start a third base. He did rebuild a few probes, but man, he just took way too much damage on that attack on the south side and just didn't quite have the unit number to deal with it. I do think it's so important on Gresson, such a big map to spot those attacks coming further out. That boost into the main of the 16 Marines was a genius move by Oliveira. Oliveira just said, look, if I pushed you to the north, I know I can slide a drop out the south. He hit it until the last minute. Nice disruptor shot for Hero. Oliveira may be getting a little bit too clickety-clackety there, going for that disruptor through the battery overcharge. Should probably be backing off for now. He knows he's ahead in this game. He's going to try and force the issue through the battery overcharge. Kind of a crazy move for, for him. But he realizes that with a numbers advantage right now, it's very difficult for Hero to ever stabilize. The Disruptor's going to go down potentially. Oh, the Colossus. Nice hot pickup there. Does save those units, picks them up and drops them on the face. And he realizes that if there's just no damage output from the opponent, it does not matter. These Zealots can't land hits. The Stalkers do next to nothing with the Metavax healing. And with no Colossus and Disruptors around, Hero has no damage output. Without damage output, there's just not much you can do. Oliveira with a genius drop in the main. I do think Hero dropped his trousers a little bit, but man, I love how crisp that was with like the moment he pushed those Phoenix back, immediately picked up and knew what to do. I also love that, remember guys, Oliveira scouted what was happening. He saw Phoenix and immediately he shifted his build. At this point, it would have been lots of tanks on Cistern and those other maps and thinking of a good push around 730. Instead, Oliveira swapped over 
didn't build any tanks. He said, oh, okay, we'll just play pure Marine Cyclone. We'll start adding Marauders only now. Go for very early medevacs. And as soon as he pushed these Phoenix back, he realized that Hero's vision is severely limited. And he's like, I know what I can do. And gets that drop across the map. Phoenix are very good if they intercept this drop and there's a Colossus in front of it. But if you can sneak around Phoenix styles, especially Phoenix Colossus, are naturally very immobile and vulnerable. Now, obviously, once he saw it, there was a big mistake as well here, guys. So let's go back to when he saw it down here on the bottom side of the map. Let's go to Hero's camera. And you can tell what happened here. This is a very easy misread, which I do all the time. He misjudged the power level of the two different prongs. So check this out, guys, because he spots this one here and he goes, oh, main army coming. And then he spots down here, double medevac. So he recalls the Phoenix, great clump into recall. And then he, he tries to warp in some stalkers down there and he splits his units at the front. So he's F2'd everything home. And he says, okay, three sentries in Colossus. You guys can defend the front everything else go up to the main to defend but you can see the problem here is he tries he thought he could intercept the drop before it unloaded so he already loses a phoenix and one gets the half-life for free those stalkers warped in too far to the front another stalker goes down and hero basically just needed to make the decision to box these units and click them over to this side and then try to fight with the stalkers and the phoenix and the battery overcharge while waiting for his uh his colossus to pop out and rally up here or something like that but it's kind of rough with only three gateways and with only four Phoenix and then you've lost one of them. You kind of see the the fragility of the style he's doing. Um, I was saying, hey, normally you build a few more Phoenix in this. But I think at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to like, do you need pylons here? Or adepts like pylons and adepts all the way out there? Because it feels like he needed to spot this earlier. Because once this drop gets in your main, oh, it's just such a weakness of these styles. I'm trying to fight with the probes. I don't think was the right idea. I understand why he did it. He obviously just misjudged. But he also panicked because that fight was going so bad. And those units which he earlier didn't bring into his main to defend. He ends up changing their path and bringing them into the main to defend. So I think in hindsight, Hero probably should have brought everything to the main to defend. And then tried to warp in up here. And tried to rally the new second Colossus out to defend the third. And if he didn't take the damage in the main and lost his third Nexus, it's not the end of the world. But taking damage in both fights is, of course, what the disaster was. And, uh, I mean, it's unfortunate for him. All three sentries go down to those Widow Mine Splashies as well. Really nice play. Losing a Colossus. I mean, this is basically game right here. And Oliveira played this map very well. This is something where a lot of the Protoss players in this tournament were looking pretty good most of the time. But the size of the maps and the fact that maps are relatively new, there were a lot of TVPs that were decided by the Protoss player not spotting a drop or an attack move out, and it's sneaking into a good position, and then everything falling apart very quickly. So I think the big change we're going to be seeing in this patch is Protoss players trying to get better at covering the map in vision and potentially just being more aggressive themselves since it's so hard to keep on top of all of these sneaky Terran drops that are sliding across the map. Either way, amazing play by... Uh by Oliveira and getting a 3-1 over Hero here is not something people were expecting at all. Very well played. All right, GG, well played.